Hello everyone, I hope you are well. I have a really cool interview today. I wanted to go down the rabbit hole of sound and astrology. So as you may know, I, I love these areas, these subjects I love to talk about. I'm trained in sound, um, vibrational sound therapy with Elaine Thompson, who I've mentioned before. But Elaine has a little secret weapon that she also works with by the name of Philip here. So Philip, how are you this morning? Good morning, Natalie. Very well, thank you, Medea. Good. I wanted to bring Philip on into the modern day world to show him off, basically. I think he's a hidden gem. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to bring him onto the channel and to be able to go deeper with the conversations around astrology and sound. Now, you will notice that Philip is on a, a kind of a, a computer at the moment with a little slightly gradient uh, camera. It's not as a, a kind of camera view that I have, but the information is well worth tuning into even if we don't have a quality picture we do have a quality conversation and uh, philip is going to be able to help us understand the lighting, the lighting is not very good in this room <laughs> don't worry well the information is amazing and i uh, i love you dearly and i think we've got a lot to talk about so for everybody that's listening if you do love astrology and you love sound get yourselves comfortable this is going to be a deep one uh, there is not much that Philip here doesn't know when it comes to astrology. Oh, there is. <laughs> well, there is, but in terms of how far he can take us down the rabbit hole, um, yes. So, Mr. Philip Sterling, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Um, first and foremost, I would love to kind of go into your past and find out, uh, just if you can explain to us how you actually got into astrology first before sound. What was your interest there? Okay, well, uh, I was chief electrician in the merchant navy for for many years and i was on the other side of the world um in the pacific in 1978 when the captain came and told me that my father had died uh which was the biggest shock uh, i've ever had in my life and probably ever will have and um about a couple of months down the line I was starting to get my head around the whole thing and I was back on board ship and I remember having a rather large bum and black in my hand and I looked up at God and I said, how dare you? Why? And that why must have really come from the heart because then in other countries around the world, astrology books seem to fall off shelves and just appear out of the woodwork and I started to read these books and it first of all it started to help me understand me and then the world around me and then why things happen um, to us it was a very uh, painful journey at first and in fact I started reading books which suggested uh, there's if you like if you're reading an astrology book it's an archetypal language more than uh when you go and see a psychologist or psychiatrist they'll tell you what they think but this is this is more universal it said there was one aspect and it it suggested something about my personality and i threw the book across the room and thought that's not me and then a couple of weeks later picked it up i thought oh my god is that me is that what i'm really like inside and i had to be brutally honest with myself and say goodness me yes it is so at that point I was able to start making some changes and improve the way I approach life um, but it was it it is an amazing subject um, and people when they have traumas a lot will turn to the church for solace and others will go and see a psychologist or a psychiatrist some will turn to drink and drugs everybody will will need to do something to figure out what on earth's going on i'm profoundly grateful that for me it was astrology mm -hmm. um because it it's a way out it's a way out it's a way of really understanding uh your a your own psychology and why things happen to you and i think more important why we attract certain things to us so somebody's who's always saying oh it's your fault you made me do this no that is not the truth you unconsciously or subconsciously attract things to you and when you start to realize that then a you can do something about it but b 
uh, there's no blame. Mm. There's absolutely no blame with astrology. If I look at my chart, uh, in, in the middle of that chart, there's, there's a pattern. It's a pattern of the angles that planets make to each other. And then I look at somebody else's chart and that's their pattern. I think, how on earth can I understand them? Um, well, you can't. And it's a good thing, you can't fully understand another person because they provide a very different pattern. So if you can't understand them, um, or well, you can to a small degree, but then mm -hmm. no, if you don't understand them fully, then there's no blame. Mm -hmm. And you merely say, this is how they are. Accept them as they are. Try and help them uh, to move forward in their own life with, with the benefit of astrology. So, um, so that was back in 1978. Uh, 20 years later, um, I had great good fortune to meet Elaine Thompson down in um, the uh, Bristol area. Western, uh, where was she then? Oh, no, she was near Glastonbury then. Mm -hmm. And I spent 10 days. And she did my voice analysis. I'd, I'd met somebody in uh, Kendall in, um, in Cumbria uh, who was doing this. And I was so bowled over by the whole concept that I said, how on earth do I learn this? She said, you have to go down and see Elaine. And the main thing is that obviously astrology, you're looking at something that has a circular form. But then I was shown music in a circular form, showing, so I've, got, I've played the piano a little bit, um, and I've always looked at things in quite a linear manner. But then suddenly they've taken an octave and they've wrapped it into a circle. So one note has an opposite note and another note has its own opposite note. And I thought, why in God's name isn't this being taught at school? This is profound. Mm -hmm. and then I found uh, that in the Middle Ages, uh, certain books did sh indeed show music in a circular form. But, but that uh, through, when we hit sort of the age of reason, <laughs> as it was very badly called, um, that that went back to a very linear thinking. And I think the, the circular mode and everything, there's no start, there's no end, um, is, is very pagan, it's very medieval. And the modern linear world has taken us away from um, the truths, in my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. So when I met Elaine, uh, say she, there was about a dozen of us from and quite a few from Europe as well. So it was a part one and part two, all rolled into one in 10 days. Oh. <laughs> it was, it was. Oh, the it part was, one sent my mind west, let alone in part one and part two in 10 days. I don't think I'd have come out alive. <laughs> well, the part one I found easy because mm -hmm. uh, I've got a scientific brain, I've got a mathematical brain. Yeah. And I could. I could, the, the numbers just added up. I could see it, it was logical. Mm -hmm. The part two, looking at the FFT and stuff like that, I found mm -hmm. that very, very difficult. And uh, do you want to explain what the FFT is, by the way, just for those uh, who don't Well, know. FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform. And it's a way of taking a complex uh, wave audio file and analyzing all of the individual sine waves that make up that overall complex pattern. Um, come on the course to learn more about uh, for anybody who's listening do the yeah. sound therapy course fast for your transform you'll find a lot about it on, on the internet it's a standard mm -hmm. it's a standard uh, industrial model which is mm -hmm. used very very widely um, but Elaine put me on the couch and uh, said okay I've done your voice prints I'll give you a sound so she gave me this sound and um, obviously I'm, I'm sort of it's that horizontal ish bed very comfortable and i thought oh, that's nice that feels nice then she oh another one and then the third one and i i went like that and i was tingling from, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet and then i went to sleep i went out like a light three o'clock in the afternoon i never sleep in the afternoon and I, I sort of came to a little bit woozy i said what the hell was that and she just said oh that was your father's frequency oh wow i must have gone very pale um and i went oh my god anyway she programmed 
that and other frequencies onto a tone box and I came home to Lancashire, continued to listen to it. And about three weeks later, and this every day, I would listen to it for one, you know, an hour every day. And one day I took it off. But I don't want that on just the moment. And I thought, oh, let's just check my voice. Normal. My father's frequency, which was an A sharp, Mm -hmm. in my voice and whatever I talked about that A sharp would not come up and there it was, it was back and then I suddenly realised oh I've stopped grieving it's a taken away the grief mm. which is a hole in the energy field yeah um, so I want to just go into that Just uh, you go into that and I'll go into it a little bit more afterwards but carry on well, well, well that was it so um, it was that point I thought that's it that's where I. That's where I am going. Yeah. And obviously, she uh, had taught, been been taught by a Sherry Edwards over in the USA, who discovered uh, the whole process back in the early eighties, mm -hmm. and and she, then Elaine brought it over to the UK, and it's like, yeah, that's where I'm going. So so I did, but the astrology side wasn't accurate. Mm -hmm. So I thought. We need to get this accurate. We need to be able to produce uh, a frequency map mm -hmm. uh, for an individual based on obviously the date, but more importantly, time. Of yep. birth. That's the key. That is the key factor. That's what makes a, a chart readable and interesting. So um, I approached the Astrological Association of Great Britain and asked them if they knew anybody who was who, who program who wrote the programs who would be prepared to add a bit and they sort of went, you are. So they were not interested in the slightest. So I wrote it myself. It took five years. Wow. <laughs> well let's go let's go into that in a minute. So just coming back to yeah. um what we were saying then also your there's a little bit of static on your mic so i don't know if there's any adjustments that you can make just while i'm talking with your laptop or if there's any way that you could i don't know if you um, can hear it at all as far as i'm aware it's quite a decent microphone i haven't had trouble with it in the past yeah it's just a little bit of static coming up but it's okay it's not too bad because we can solve it afterwards and we can cut this bit out of the um the interview okay. anyway and just tidy it up afterwards so we we were just then talking about um you know the the kind of grief that you mentioned and being able to it is a hole in the energy field essentially yes it is and i can i can stand by what you're saying because as, as you know i i had my sessions done with elaine before i went on the course and i personally had a, a deep grief um scenario in my life where i was really suffering with a loss of someone because it, we'd, we'd kind of separated and it was very like we're not talking anymore it was really harsh um and I, I love that person dearly i still do very much in a in a loving you know friendship way but at the time there was such a grief there was such a sorrow and a loss and a real pain in my life that was so heavy and i i knew that there needed to be something that there had to be there was, it was it kind of wasn't normal in a sense it was like dragging out it had been years and this had gone on in the total time that I'd connected with this person. There'd been like a whole nine years since we'd met, but I think since we'd spoken, it was like five years. So there was a real heaviness to me. And I thought, you know, when after speaking to Elaine, I was thinking, I wonder if this is going to work. And we explained the situation. And, and, and as you go through, for those of you who don't know at home, um, Elaine asks me a set of questions and I go through and I answer and I tell, you know, as I'm talking, Elaine's recording. So I'm giving her the answers and I'm talking through this scenario. And she can very clearly see on my uh, my voice print what's missing and then obviously programmed me the frequencies and sent me the frequencies on a tone box, which is like what Phil's just been saying. And I was listening to them and I did it daily for a couple of weeks and then after kind of died off a little bit. But I was slowly starting to feel slightly different, just being like, I'm not quite sure. You know, there's something, but you're not quite sure yeah. but you know that there's something and then it gets a little bit deeper and then you're like mm. and then all of a sudden it kind of dawns on you that there's been a shift but it was such a shift it's like a natural progression and then you're like oh and then I sent I got back in touch with Elaine and I said yeah I'm feeling a little bit better so she says okay let's jump on and let's do another call and we went through a whole other voice process and the second time she's asking me the same questions and I'm answering in a slightly different way. And obviously my voice has changed and my composure, I'm, I'm composed in a different way and my wording's different. And I'm having a very similar conversation, but there's slight subtle differences. And then she resends me some more sounds. And then 
it was I think it was about two or three weeks afterwards the the feeling of like oh, everything's just okay it's a really subtle space that you, isn't it? you just drop in and you're like oh and the grief is no longer there and the appreciation forms where you're just like I get it I appreciate it and it's it is a beautiful process and I and that was with someone who's still alive so I can't even begin to imagine a direct thing like a, a father and that kind of shift no wonder you fell asleep <laughs> but that but, was like in, in three weeks yeah uh, and, and so, sometimes I've had clients who have shifted almost immediately yeah others can take three weeks three months yeah if you like. um and occasionally can take years and you will not and you neither you nor they will see be aware of the process until it's finished mm -hmm. and then you will wake up and think my god I, yeah i feel differently about life but it, yeah. it, it, it is a subtle process and people don't have the patience to wait they run to the doctor i want a pill and i want it fixed now mm -hmm. uh we say are you prepared to work on yourself have you got the patience do it without drugs it'll take a little longer but by god it will be permanent in the uh, yeah and it lasts never, never look back yeah and i i stand true to that i can whatever he's saying right now people i'm telling you i'm experienced with this this stuff works and it lasts and i feel tremendously calm within that space with no you know no assistance with a pill no deep talking therapy no psychological work it's with sound to be able to you're effectively you're playing the sound of the person that you miss effectively replaces the hole in the field so you're actually rebuilding and you're it's not necessarily the person that you miss essentially your field misses that frequency that the person exists in so if that person exists in i don't know 18 point something hertz and that's the frequency that you're missing when you're playing that frequency back to yourself you you've got it you, you and without the person you've got the frequency so you start to feel the resonance you start to be able to come into into kind of harmony with that and it, it i mean this is just the two of us i mean how many people is there out there that have done this that we can we could yeah, find a lot, a lot. but interestingly enough also that the the converse is true if you are particularly angry at somebody um that is as big a problem as as the whole Mm. You can be sending out energy to repel them because you can't cope with, with their energy. So you then, we need to balance your energy field in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, and there's an awful lot of very angry people out there. I'm not surprised what's happened this last 18 months. Yeah. Um, and, and I find sibling rivalry uh, a problem. Um, there's two sisters... And then another family is two sisters and they are like cat and dog at each other all the time we we'll say right slow down uh look at look at you know the the, the dynamic between you take this sound to, to to stop you firing out all this negative energy at them mm -hmm. and that works as well but that that's obviously if they've been si if siblings they've been their siblings for, for for a very long time <laughs> So that again yeah. takes a little longer uh, to fix. And yeah. people who've got a lot of fixed energy in their astrological chart don't shift as quickly. So, it, okay, um, and you, you I, I think you're, was it Gemini or Sag? Gemini, yeah, you you're can Gemini. use my chart, so that's, yeah. That is a really flexible sign. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, that's flowing. You flow with ideas. And that's easier to, 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 to shift. I, I'm Libra, so I'm cardinal. I like to push things forward, start something and finish it as well. Um, but those who are predominantly uh, fixed energy, such as Taurus, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius, and I don't necessarily say the sun sign, uh, somebody can be of a sun sign and have a lot of fixed energy in the chart anyway and I find they they take a little bit longer to to shift mm -hmm. but it, it does work but it, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's not yeah 
So there's a lot. So in terms of obviously, we're going into just explaining obviously where you have come from and and how you have stepped into this kind of from the astrology and into the sound, and you have uh, you have a very different approach. Obviously, I had two sessions with Elaine, which were predominantly based in kind of the medical sound side, and then when I came to do the training, uh, we partnered together, didn't we? We partnered together, and you did um, you did my kind of astrological approach, and I think so. There was another four or five people in the room that were also on the course that actually were were trying out the sound bed and the sounds relatively for the first time and they were having very profound things coming through you know there was some tears there was some shifts there was there was oh, yes. lots of very yeah very big noticeable noticeable shifts when they were getting onto the sound bed because you can deliver sound in two ways you can deliver sound through headphones with a tone box where you program the tones into the into the tone box or you can uh, be on the sound bed and there's, there's a vibration there's a subwoofer that's in the sound bed and you can receive the sounds when laying on the bed so because I'd already worked with Elaine a few of the people who were in the room were like how come you're not having as much of a response because you know because when Phil's doing yours and, and Elaine was very clear to say Nat's worked a lot she's kind of testament to what this stuff does because she's worked on it a lot and there isn't that much of a, an emotional response but then I delved into your side which was the astrological stuff which treated me in a different way which opened me up in other ways so can you can you kind of uh, approach more about linking in why you feel it's so beneficial to come from an astrological approach to the sound as well and not just a medical one because I felt the difference of both and I, and I, well, I love the astrological stuff it's, it is not either or the the it is still on, on a medical I don't don't use the word medical use the word energetic energetic okay. you look at you look at the, the what we call the pod and we're not going into exactly what that is because that's trade secrets <laughs> and uh, trying to get that but there are certain patterns um, which are standard and if somebody's high in their own note and low in their complementary note then you play the complementary note the uh, uh, but you're still if you, if you like attacking the, the the energy field so that it will if you balance the energy field you'll balance the medical side mm. okay go to the doctor he says take this pill you will feel better we say we will help you feel better so you don't need the pill so it, we're working the opposite way you have a thought that thought becomes a feeling the feeling then becomes an action so it's the mental the emotional the physical in that order mm -hmm. the allopathic uh, traditions is you, they only deal with the physical they're not interested in the mental or the emotional you have to mm -hmm. go to a specialist for that allopathic meaning the doctor's way of doing things just That's in case anybody doesn't know this this is almost homeopathic mm -hmm. sound therapy is you could almost class it as a homeopathic remedy because it's like treating like. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, so if somebody, some, when I've explained this before, some people have said to me, oh, if you're dealing with the sound, you're not allowing for that emotion, you know, because there's a kind of a, there's an alchemy that takes place when we go into our emotions, when we witness our feelings and we witness our emotions and we can work with that and we're sitting with what's true for us internally we can create a shift if we ignore our feelings and push them under the carpet we don't tend to get much work done but some people may suggest that if you're actually working with sound to help you with those feelings or to help you make those shifts what would you say if somebody said well that's not really doing the work that's cheating as opposed to actually sitting with the problem and going into it from a kind of inquiry space would you well, that, I, depends very much on the on the individual uh, yeah. how many people can really truly tap into their own feelings mm -hmm. um, I think most women can I would think <laughs> and a lot of fellas can't but that's that's too general um, and obviously I'm from a generation where it, you didn't talk about yeah. your feelings, it's stiff or for it, oh, just get on with it, will you? And all that stuff. Yeah, it's not that you can't, it's just you're not known, shown not, how to. It's not encouraged. Um, yeah. I, I am quite an emotional person. To, to a certain level, uh, I'm interested in the emotional side of life because I've been challenged with it. Um, no, it's not cheating at all. The mm -hmm. sound assists you in tapping into those emotions and becoming aware of them it brings them oh. it brings them out mm. and and yes it can it can you can play a sound and it can suddenly trigger floods of tears you think where the hell did that just come from because 
you've not been able to do it for yourself. It's it's an assistance. That's what it is. It, it triggers all the stuff within you to come out and and be aware of it and deal with it and work with it. Mm -hmm. so no cheat. That's that's the last word you could ever use. Yeah, it. I I agree with you. But some people are are inclined to think that there's there's only kind of one hierarchy of way, and that's to oh, just yeah. sit and process. So, but it's it's more of an assisting. And we are sound. You know, we're made of sound. We're made of sound. vibration frequencies. So there's we only are dealing with what we are essentially. We're not trying to use say psychedelics to go sound. somewhere. Or I am sound. You there you go. Friend. <laughs> and the the way that um you know we've had conversations your approach is you focus a little bit more on explaining people at, with their astrological signs and going in on that kind of way which was really useful to me because i you know i got to learn things about myself that i didn't yeah. necessarily know prior yeah. to, to chatting what, what i do is not an either or it's, it is not uh elaine does this i do that mm -hmm. The astrology, uh, you look at the specific astrological frequencies, which that might sound a bit odd, um, but if you look at a complete frequency map, and, and if you just look at the sun sign and the opposite sign, and the two to the right angle, that's looking at the basics, but then this is an overlay, mm -hmm. this is an added layer, an added level. And you bring in these frequencies and and it simply adds to uh the what i would call the standard healing method um hmm. yeah hmm. there's a there's a real interest i think now uh, you know in our world if we if we come away from the focus of kind of what you do in a session and we look at it on a global perspective and in the world right now we're going through very strange times <laughs> very bizarre um it's which, obvious to some, some of which were predicted some of which were predicted so uh, your current perspective of where we are in the world right now in terms of astrologically and kind of what what we can go into our potential as it were what would your thoughts be around that because it's, some people are thinking it's a very dark time some believe it's a very light and auspicious time because we you know we're facing the challenges we've always run away from what would your views be around where we are now <laughs> Indeed, I've got, a, I've got a, a dear friend on the South Coast who says, oh, this is all perfect. Everything is right for its time and people will move through it and uh, come into the, uh, into the Aquarian age and be more spiritual. And, oh, yes, all this has to happen. And they'll just say, no, this is dark as hell, actually. <laughs> this so is like Satan. It's a big conflict of opinion. Yeah. What I find interesting is because we live here in the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom has its own astrology chart. And the one I find particularly interesting is the 1st of January uh, 1801, uh, when, when uh, the United Kingdom became the complete United Kingdom that we now understand. And the chart is very interesting. And because we live within that concept of the UK, we are then subject to the energies um, mm -hmm. that hit the UK as a whole. Uh, occasionally, as an individual, you can step aside, keep your head below the radar and avoid flying shrapnel. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're still uh, subject to um, the energies within the UK, which are very different from Russia, China, USA, Australia, etc., etc. And uh, last year, I think a lot of the what's been happening has come from the UK. A lot of the suggestions about how we move forward or mm -hmm. backwards in some cases have, come, have started here in the UK. Yeah. But I'm not going down the political line on this one. Mm -hmm. the, the massive uh, conjunction last year between uh, Ju Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto was very profound. And it, it held a place in the in the chart of the UK that completely was was com and still is to a certain degree completely opposite to the people, which is represented by uh, the, the the moon in in Cancer mm -hmm. in the chart of the UK, and all of this energy was completely opposing it, and the people have been shut down. Yeah. Now, starting to things move on and think we're coming out of that dark space and they whoever they are are trying to keep it going but mm -hmm. it can't 
of its own accord. You, you know, people are starting to wake up to what has happened and why it's happened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of you may or may not be aware of what's going in or going on in Australia at the moment, which is a seriously dark place, mm -hmm. and parts of Canada as well, and Austria, and all of that. Now we we are we are experiencing certain freedoms here in the UK, which others are not. Mm -hmm. um, just before you go on to that, just if anybody isn't aware of what's going on, just very, very briefly, in Australia they have um, camps that they're putting people into um, that are testing negative for COVID, that are breaking some of the rules, that are also people who are unwilling to be vaccinated. So they're going and being segregated into camps and in places yeah. like Austria and Germany, they're putting up fences between supermarkets where people are vaxxed and unvaxxed. There's a very big segregation of society happening in those places. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, so carry on, I just wanted yeah. to make and sure people knew. When you segregate society, it's, it's divide and conquer. Yeah. They then have to can sit back and they don't have to do anything else because they've set people against each other. And we will do it ourselves. And we will do it for them. Well, we yeah. won't. We won't because you look at the astrology helps you wake up. The mm -hmm. young people say, hey, we're woke. Yeah. The modern phrase, well, let's all be woke. And astrology yeah. is one of the great tools to help us uh, get to that point and then you'll be aware completely of what's going on and then one can stand up and say no i'm actually not subscribing to the narrative mm -hmm. so yeah so, go, going back to the healing i i, I would like to come back to the, the healing part of that because when you look at a person's chart very often you'll see that chart has opposition so they'll have a, one or two planets on one side and one or two planets on the other side and they will be opposed to each other and that to me is always suggested that that person is likely to go through some quite emotional uh challenges within their life if you've got two planets that are square to each other in other words at the 90 degree angle they will still have challenges but very often it's more of a physical nature they're likely to be a little bit accident prone uh, or argumentative but the oppositions are more interesting because obviously looking at the voice print we're looking for a note opposite another note to be in balance mm -hmm. and um, if you hmm, what, what can I what can I use an example um, uh, moon in Virgo opposite Mars in uh, Pisces uh, quite reactionary that person can be quite reactionary so then i will look at the notes of f and b the corresponding musical notes are they out of balance oh yes they are so let's try and balance those notes up and that will help the person cope with the situation without being too reactionary they'll there'll be a better approach to that situation but they need to have that inner balance mm -hmm. so technology Links so closely in with the in with the, the the voice analysis, it allows you to see why something has gone out of balance, and that is the key. Because then you can discuss that. So I say, well, how do you feel that you are a reactionary person? Oh no, of course I'm not. <laughs> oh, I act as like. Um, maybe You're like, you are. Okay. Just a little bit. So you give them the sound. Uh, they feel karma inside straight away, but person, but they have to continue. It's it's something that will be they might need for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, un unless th then we come to the other side of astrology, are they going to have a major transit? Is is one of the outer planets going to come and trigger that opposition in any way, shape, or form? And that in itself will shift them to an uh, to another level mm -hmm. uh, in the interim uh, the sound will help them cope more with with life so again it's the it's the overlay there's a standard healing pattern uh, that's used in the sound therapy but the uh, but the, the astrology just allows that little overlay and gives you a glimpse um <laughs> through a glass darkly yeah as as to why something might have, have uh, gone wrong or gone out of balance mm -hmm. and sometimes also at what point in their life did it happen 
Oh, so it was it was the father, was it? Yeah. He involved. Oh, no, it was the mother involved. Mm -hmm. So then you can bring their birth frequencies in to to assist in the healing process. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is profound it. how it brings it's in. Profound and it's not it, straightforward. Yeah, it yeah. isn't. And, and to, for me, like seeing, obviously, I've had lots of things happen in my life. Not obviously, but I've had lots of things happen in my life that have helped me to get to where I am today. So I don't look back and say anything was terrible. But at the time, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on? What is yeah. going on? But then obviously working with you and Elaine and seeing patterns and looking at things, there's there's answers and there's reasons. There's a guy I really want to introduce you to that I'd love to do actually a both an interview with both of you at some point. And he does something called soul resonance that he came up with. And where you guys look where you look in the astrological, he's looking at the ground. So he looks at the ley lines that are matching when people move around. So for example, significant dates in my life. Um, and where I am in terms of where I am on planet Earth will match up to certain ley lines and he creates the map on the ground as opposed to in the stars. And I think you two would have a beautiful conversation to be able to connect because it's well, it's going to be very well, interesting. There is something in astrology called astrocartography. Yes, this is uh, what he's So was I'm born in, in, in Manchester mm -hmm. um, way back in 1846. But... <laughs> And then you can look at the line from from there through the planet. It's a bit crazy that, and and it puts uh, an arc, uh, a great circle, mm -hmm. around, around the world, and it shows various points on the Earth where, if you follow the Mars energy, uh, that'll that'll help you be more energetic. Yeah. If you follow the the line of the Sun, it might take you to another part of the world, and that's where you can really find the true essence of who you are. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So astrocartography again, quite a complex subject, uh, but fascinating. It brings the, the heavens down very much onto the earth. Yeah. And shows you the places where you'll benefit, and also. If you look at a planet in your chart and you know that's a challenging planet and you're never really going to surmount that, then if you go to those places, it'll, it'll be 10 times more difficult. Mm -hmm. So follow the lines where you know there's likely to be opportunity to, to move forward. Yeah. And this assistance, you know, I, I genuinely, you know, I love a rabbit hole, as you know, and I, I interview lots of different people about very random subjects. And I love the adventure, the kind of, you know, Alice in Wonderland approach where I'm nothing for me is off the cards. If it's a good conversation and it's a nice flow, then I will go there. And I've learned so much by being open in that way, where some people would close it down, shut it and say, this is not for me. This is gobbledygook. This is, you know, I don't believe it. And I believe like, our capacity for belief is what's important, but also being willing to be able to let go of our beliefs and change for other things to be able to kind of move with this information. And uh, there's, there's so many things now in the world where we're coming into new information and we have to be willing to receive that information we have to be willing to take this and use it rather than push it aside because it can really help us you know it can really help us become the best versions of us and why would we not want that support the the mad hatter said to alice alice am i am i really mad she said yes you are completely and utterly bonkers but then all the best people are indeed yeah. <laughs> There's so many <laughs> wonderful messages from the from the alleys in Wonderland. Books. Yeah, we've Very used clever. it. We're using it quite a lot in the in the I Am Sound journey. Is we're referencing quite a lot to do with Alice in Wonderland because we are taking people down a rabbit hole, but oh, scientifically is. sound as well. Yeah. So um, there's oh, oh, the gone. linear path is quite boring, oh, isn't it? Why, why go, would you go, want to do that? Go, find the twists and turns. Go off. Go off piece. Yeah, exactly. Well, Live look, I. I love what you're doing and I, I want to have several conversations with you on different areas around different subjects and I, I wanted to kind of have a first interview with you to kind of introduce you to my audience and to go and to get you comfortable with being on air which I'm very happy that you've done so I'm very I very quite, happy. I was quite nervous about being on camera. <laughs> but this has been good no? Easy. It's lovely. Um, you're just having a nat chat. Okay, a nat chat. A nat chat. Yeah, that's what people keep telling me. It's just a nat chat. It's really simple. It's just like just a conversation, and they forget that they're on air or that they're in camera on the camera. Oh, I can't forget. I can see myself on the screen. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but I would I would urge people to look at astrology carefully. Uh, 
if they know their rising sign, otherwise known as the ascendant, then have a look at the newspapers. If, you know, just looking at your sun sign in, in the papers, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I met one of the guys who wrote uh, a lot for the Daily Mail quite, quite a lot of years ago. And he explained to me how they do it. And, and I just thought, oh, I wish, you'd, I wish you'd put that at the top of your column. Yeah. Look at your rising sign. Yeah. So I'm Libra, born just before dawn, so my rising sign is Virgo. Mm -hmm. So if I happen to look at the newspapers and the columns, uh, I'll read Virgo. And I think, oh, that's interesting. Mm. Okay. All these hidden <laughs> secrets. Oh, there's, well, there's so many hidden secrets. That's, that's why the, the esoteric is so interesting, because it's mm. just... It's there, it's hidden, it's what you're not taught at school. Yeah. The same as in the music, uh, what was called the Devil's Interval. And the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages stopped this musical interval from being played. And now we find out that, that uh, it's the most healing combination of sounds that you can possibly get. Go into that a little bit more, the devil. So uh, I don't know anything about no, it. If, if, yeah, uh, it was mentioned on the course. If you've got uh, C, the notes of C, yeah. uh, the piano, and if you play the notes of G, that is a perfect fifth. Ah, oh, right, because that's where they're really healing, aren't they, when you use the tuning forks as well. With yeah, two. So do, do, C, G, perfect harmony. Uh, but now, go, go on to a piano and play C and F sharp. They are the opposite notes, C sharp and G. If you play those two notes together, at a very low frequency, in a mm -hmm. low octave, it's very, very healing. Uh, but if you play it on the piano, it sounds absolutely awful. Uh, but a lot of musicians, uh, and I think the Catholic Church knew that it was a potential uh, healing combination, uh, not particularly musical, but that's why they, they, they banned it, because it takes away control. It allows the person to heal themselves mm. and it, so it's called the devil's interval it's also known as harmonic tritone um, wow. got musical fourth the fifth the third the sixth uh, uh, and so on these are standard musical intervals wow we need to go. musically it sounds horrible yeah. unless you play it uh if, if you like an octave below mm -hmm. uh, the lowest note on the piano then it becomes interesting then that's what we that's what we use to help people heal mm -hmm. devil's interval devil's interval i love yeah. that da, 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 da. <laughs> and it helps us become angels oh <laughs> using their tricks against us oh yes yeah not against them should i say um well look i uh, first and foremost for anybody who's watching um really uh you know this is philip sterling this is the other amazing person in sound and astrology that i highly recommend that if you want a session reach out you can get booked in and you will learn so much about yourself in terms of where you can go where you've been where you are now um we will put all of your details underneath as well philip so everybody can have that information um this is one big fat huge testimonial from being one of his previous clients and i'm very much happy to be so and i highly recommend him um so if you are you know looking to reach out and for the same you know if there's lots of people out there i know have reached out to me before and said oh how do you figure out your birth note and all of that kind of stuff you figure it out when you go and have a session and you will come to learn a lot more I was going to, I, I was asked if I could put a little extra program on my website to do it automatically. Yeah. Um, we have decided yeah. uh, that that's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I said to you, I said to Elaine, we have to talk about that and we have to make it a certain way. So it's within thing, but we'll go up, we'll do that offline. Don't but, worry. Uh, is it okay for me to just say biosound.co.uk? Yeah people want to have a look at that uh I'm, is that your website isn't it that's my website yeah I kind of get. i'm just north of manchester uh in on top of a hill which is very cold and very wet at the moment uh, but otherwise uh the most fabulous panoramic view of the of, of the valleys and the dales and uh, i invite people into my house they come and sit in my front room 
Um, on the, I don't have a sound bed. It's a fold-up vibroacoustic chair. Mm -hmm. And you will see a picture of that on, on, on the website under uh, products, training, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And all the details will be underneath. And obviously anybody that's got any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you haven't already, um, also, uh, if you're watching this, should I say, on the membership area of I Am Sound, we hope that you're enjoying the membership and that you're going down your own rabbit hole of learning more about frequencies and sounds. And if you are not a member, feel free to go to IamSoundAcademy.com. Check out what we have to offer. We have a weekly subscription. Uh, we will be going fully um, all into the areas of sound, astrology deep into energy and looking at how we can change ourselves so we can change the world from the inside out so thank you very much for thank your time you for inviting me Natalie. no problem at all if you stay there for me everybody else at home um, we will see you on the next one don't forget to reach out if you do have any questions bye for now